S23, S23 FE, S23, S23 FE. I'm in way over my head. If you're feeling a little bit Mr. Burns about which one of these you should get, don't worry. This video is for you. Today, we compare the Galaxy S23 to the Galaxy S23 FE. Let's go. Daniel here from Tech with Benefits. Today, we break down the difference between Samsung's latest S23 entrant, the Fan Edition, versus their flagship version of the same phone, the base model S23. We're going to break it down into three different categories. We're going to look at the design and the display of these two phones. We're then going to take a look at the cameras and then we'll finish off with the performance difference because there is some hardware differences internally that might help you decide which one of these is for you. Let's start with design. For design, I'm not going to be taking into account size because that is a personal preference thing. You might like smaller phones and if that's the case, easy choice, Galaxy S23. But if you're looking at sort of the difference in quality between these two in terms of design, let's take a look. On the S23 FE, you have the glossy back. For a while, this was considered a premium finish it's Google Glass 5, so it's durable enough. It's not going to be the same level as this, but you just see reflections in this one. And it's very fingerprinty. Although they have limited it with this color that I've got here, it's not too bad, but you definitely, definitely notice that. The in-hand feel is very different when you consider this. The nice matte finish has a really nice feel to it in the hand, whereas the glossy does feel like you're holding a glossy, you, you feel it, you feel the glossy glass in the hand. The frame is the opposite. You've got the matte finish frame, on the S23 FE, and you have the glossy frame on the normal S23. And there's a difference in material too. This is aluminium and this is armor aluminium. The armor aluminium is a bit lighter, so that makes this phone much lighter in the hand than this one, which depending on what you want out of your phone, you might want the lighter feel, and it does feel incredibly light for a phone of this quality versus the 209 grams that the S23 FE is in the hand. All of those materials, and the difference in the, how they feel make the standard S23 feel more premium. It just has a more premium in-hand feel, it just does. It's a bit thinner, so the two devices sort of next to each other, you do notice the slightly thinner design in the frame with these two phones. What you can also see with the design is the slightly more attention to detail when it comes to things like the camera protrusion. They've both got the minimalist camera design, which doesn't really sort of intrude on the design on the back of the phone at all. It's just very minimalistic. But the base model S23 just has that more premium subtle appearance about it, where they're just slightly protruding out of the back of the glass and it just looks a bit better. Whereas the FE, they're very much sticking out. Despite the fact this is a thicker phone, you might've thought that the space inside would be better for the cameras, but holding up next to each other, the S23 definitely looks cleaner in that respect. When we turn the devices around to the front, you definitely notice even more here. The Galaxy S23 just has a more thinner, uniformed look about it with the bezels that occupy around the screen. The FE, look, and this is always gonna happen with when Samsung make a phone cheaper than the flagship, the bezels become bigger. Whether or not that's okay, that's up for you to decide. For me, it's not the predominant reason to buy the phone. All it does is set the device apart in Samsung's lineup. Apple did it. The iPhone 15 versus the 15 Pro series, the bezels are thicker. So it's not like it's an unknown quantity at this point. Thicker bezels in the higher end phones, so Samsung and Apple, indicate that it's not the top tier. That doesn't mean that the display is any less. We'll get to that in a moment. You just, it's visually striking. You see the difference. Another thing you see too is the camera cutout. There's a silver ring around the FE. For whatever reason, Samsung continue to do this. I don't think they need to, but again, it's probably just for them to distinguish the difference between flagship and non-flagship. In terms of the display difference itself, on paper, they're very similar. Both Dynamic AMOLED 2X, both got adaptive refresh rates. One's adaptive refresh rate, the fan edition, is 60 and 120 hertz, whereas the normal S23 is 48 to 120. So it goes down slightly lower. Different peak brightness levels as well. You've got 1,000 nits versus 1,750. You do notice that outdoors, but a thing that I notice even more outdoors is the difference in the vision booster. So the vision booster on the S23 FE is just last year's S22 version, which it'll raise the peak brightness and try and bring colors to match it. The S23 has adaptive vision booster, which will adapt the colors depending on how bright it goes. You can see the difference side by side here that the S23 just has better colors outdoors 
in peak brightness versus the S23 FE. It's bright, great, but it doesn't quite match the color accuracy of what the S23 standard model does. Outside of that though, the display quality is quite similar. It's not going to be a reason, in my opinion, to go the S23 over the FE. If you like thinner bezels, then sure, but outside of that, the displays, you're going to get good quality out of both. What might help you make up your mind though, is the fingerprint situation. On the S23 FE, you have a very hit and miss optical fingerprint scanner that is much too low, versus the very reliable, very secure, correctly placed S23 standard model ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. Much better and much easier as you can see from this side by side. It's just a more reliable fingerprint scanner and works more of the time. Let me know which design you prefer in the comments below. I much prefer the S23, just my personal preference. However, I wouldn't be upset if there, I had to use the FE. Well, I have been using it, but what I mean is that I much prefer the matte glass, the, the thinnest, more uniform bezels. That's my style. That's my jam. The thing is, if you showed me the FE five years ago, I would have thought, wow, how crazy smartphones have gotten. But now that we have the rest of the designs that we've got, FE feels slightly dated. But again, you've got to think about the target audience. Design probably isn't their first priority when it comes to buying a phone. Okay, now we're getting into the cameras. This is probably one that a lot of people want to know about. For me, the cameras between these two phones on paper look quite similar. The good thing is Samsung are offering very similar hardware flexibility. You have an ultra wide, you have a main high resolution 50 megapixel camera, and you have a three times telephoto. But there is some subtle hardware differences between those three cameras that do separate these two phones when you actually start using them. The first is the ultra wide camera. They're both 12 megapixels, but the normal S23 has a dual pixel autofocus ultra wide camera and the sensor is larger. So that means that it's going to be faster for focusing and it'll be able to pull in more light because it's got a larger sensor size. The main camera, again, both 50 megapixels, but there is a newer 50 megapixel sensor in the base model S23 versus last year's 50 megapixel sensor on the FE. But physicality wise, they're very, very similar but we'll get into output in a moment so you can see the difference. The three times camera is probably where on paper you get the biggest difference. You have an eight megapixel three times telephoto on the FE versus a 10 on the S23 base model. Thing is though, both of these upscale to 12 megapixel photos. But again, I'll get into output in a moment. Selfie camera around the front, silver ring aside, you have two very different selfie cameras. You've got a 10 megapixel selfie camera on the FE versus a 12 megapixel dual pixel autofocus on the base model S23. I can just say straight away, output wise here, big difference. The S23 is far and away the better selfie camera versus the FE, hands down. Before we get into output, let's talk some of the UI and feature differences between the two. The S23 FE pretty much has all the capabilities and feature set of the S22 from last year. The S23 gets all of the juicy stuff that the S23 got, of course, because it got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. Things like 4K portrait video mode make a huge difference to how you capture content. Portrait video is one of my favorite things to use. This is 4K portrait video right now. The S23 FE has no Quad HD Super Steady, so you do get the Super Steady Quad HD on the standard S23. No 8K 30 on the FE. You do get 8K 24, but I'll show you that difference later. You know what, I'll show you now. You have a look at this difference between the two, the AK24 on the FE, it's choppy, it's cropped in heavier, whereas the AK30 is much smoother and even much better at stabilization. You've got pro mode on the FE, but you don't get 50 megapixel pro mode, which you do get on the standard S23. A lot of that is down to the processor on the S23, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, versus what the Exynos 2200 was capable of. Well, it wasn't capable of it. And with the S23 FE, you don't get the optical two times crop. At least you don't get the button, but again, in software differences, the two times crop, you do get a better optimization with the S23 standard model. And you can see that difference here. The two times crop just produces better details on the standard S23 versus the FE. Everything else feature-wise, Samsung have upgraded the FE this year. They've brought in the full director's view. They've got two times portrait crop in here. All of that juicy stuff is pretty much on parity. There's just those subtle differences, quality of life upgrades mainly, that the S23 gets, thanks to the fact that it's got the better processor. If we take a look at some of the photo comparisons here, the, the thing I noticed through taking photos with both of these at the same time is they have a processing difference. The S23, what I noticed, it makes things brighter, 
it's got a brighter output with its processing versus the FE, which kind of leaves things a little bit darker, particularly when you start to crop in to two times, for example, the two times on the FE versus the two times on the S23, there's a difference there where the S23 retains a lot of detail and a lot of brightness. In terms of the rest of the output differences though, you really can't determine that there's too much. HDR is fine between the two. The ultra wide on the FE do lose a little bit of detail versus the dual pixel detail from the S23 base model ultra wide. That I noticed, but also the three times. The three times for me is probably where the biggest difference lies. And that's thanks to the fact that it's only an eight megapixel camera versus a 10. I know I said both get upscaled to 12, but the three times in the FE is a lot softer versus the three times on the base model S23. I couldn't test 50 megapixel mode, mainly because the software version I have of the FE is a little bit too early. The, the optimization of the 50 megapixels not quite there yet. So I didn't want to do a disservice to the FE and pit it up against the fully optimized September version software update. So I left it. When we take a look at portrait mode, the output you can definitely tell there is a better cutout situation going on with the standard S23 versus the FE. You look at my son's hair here in this photo, you can clearly see it's picked up more individual strands and blurred through the ringlets of his curls versus the standard S23 FE, which hasn't done that. When it comes to video, again, it's very hard pressed in sort of decent enough lighting conditions to notice too much of a difference. But if you isolate the FE on its own, it does take great video. I took these videos last week at the beach and I was very happy with their output. Side by side to the S23 base model, the difference is mainly to do with, again, processing how it processes HDR, how it processes stabilization. You've already seen the 8K difference, so we're not going to go, go there again. So there's just some differences there with video. Stabilization is fine. In terms of settings for video, you'll notice that there's some extra settings with the S23. A lot of it's to do with sound recording, like zoom in mic and 360 audio recording with Bluetooth headphones, for example. But they're not really big, massive deals. Again, they're just quality of life stuff that the S23 gives you over the FE. I also tested the microphone qualities. I couldn't tell too much of a difference, but I'll hand it over to you. You let me know which one you think sounds better. All right, this is just the microphone from the Galaxy S23, normal one. Hmm? And this is the microphone from the Galaxy S23 FE. Let me know which one you think sounds better. So camera wise, I, I don't know. I think overall for me, the camera comes down to the performance of the camera itself. I think I prefer the faster, snappier S23 versus the FE, but the FE, whilst it looks more like an A series, definitely doesn't perform like one much enjoy the S23 FE versus the A54. Yeah, in terms of speed, the S23 can capture faster and you can see the difference here with movement, for example, of, of people running quickly. The S23 can kind of retain details, become a bit sharper in there versus the FE, which doesn't do a terrible job. It just is a little bit more, you can describe it for me in the comments. The last one's performance. On paper, it's, you almost wouldn't want to be the Exos 2200 right now, just purely because we know how good the optimized Snapdragon HN2 for Galaxy has been over the course of the year. And we know how, I was bad, it's a bit of a strong word, but we know what happened with the Exynos 2200 last year in the S22 series. But Samsung have gone, gone to work and optimized the Exynos 2200. And it definitely is evident here in the FE. In my usage with it for the last two weeks, I've noticed battery life be decent. Like after about, half a day of usage or like three hours of screen on time. I'm at 55%, which I don't think would have been possible last year with the Exynos 2200. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm also not saying it's terrible. You can expect that. It's expectant battery life for the price you're paying and the processor that's in there. Don't be disappointed with it. It's, it's more than enough. I haven't got to test the S23 battery, but I know the Ultra. And I know it's got a bigger battery, but it's also got an equally bigger screen. The processor efficiency on that is phenomenal. So you can expect very good battery life out of the S23. But again, don't be fooled by the S23's Exynos 2200 on the FE, you'll be fine. In terms of other performance, I don't like benchmarks. I've said that before. I think they can tell you what a processor's ceiling is or its capability, but that doesn't really equate to how you use your phone. You're not sitting there re-looping web pages or throwing super intensive graphics at it all the time. So it's great for a certain understanding of a processor's capability, but you want to see how it works and things you'll do every day. For example, you want to see the performance of QuickShare. So I tested that and it performed on par 
with the S23 base model, the FE. So receiving files via quick share, no stress. You might want to see things like photo editing. Again, in Lightroom, there wasn't a significant difference. In fact, there wasn't really much at all. Both happened pretty instantaneously when you exported something. You might want to see how it can handle video editing or video rendering. So in the, the Galaxy Native Editor, I did a couple of different things. I went from 8K and scaled it down to 4K. The S23 FE actually did faster here. I have a theory though. The FE only has 24 frames per second. The 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy S23 had 30 frames per second to deal with. That could be some of it. But it was only a 9 second clip, so there's probably a couple of variances here and there. Where I noticed the biggest performance difference was rendering longer videos. So going down from a 4K 40 second video and taking it down to full HD. The HN2 for Galaxy stormed ahead here and really showed its performance prowess for doing that type of task. Other than that, the smoothness and fluidity of the FE, I haven't noticed any big stutters, any drops. It's actually been quite impressive. And I remember just... just Casting back to the A54 when I had that for a couple of weeks, I noticed that that did have a lot of stutters. It didn't feel smooth as an operating system. This one though, I don't think you'll have any problems. So versus the S23, the main thing you'll miss out on is probably a bit of extra battery efficiency and some performance prowess in certain high load tasks and sustained performance at that. Granted though, I did a lot of these sort of performance tests and the back of the phones on either of them didn't really heat up. So the heating issue that the Exodus 2200 kind of seemed to be known for last year, Samsung seems to have optimized that. And certainly with the new software, the One UI 5.1, there doesn't seem to be any issues of that kind. Both phones with charging, they both have 25 watt fast charging, both have 15 watt fast wireless charging, if you can call them fast. Both of them support wireless power share. I think from a battery standpoint as well, you're getting the same picture. So look, Performance wise, the main thing you'll notice is that sustained performance of the base model S23 versus the Exynos 2200 on the FE. So, two phones that share the S23 name. One of them is designed for fans, although in my opinion it should be a fan essentials, not a fan edition, because it gives you a lot of stuff that you need, but not everything that you don't need, if that makes sense. Versus the S23, which packs everything in at a decent price too, in a package that's Definitely from a design standpoint, a lot more premium than the S23 FE. So let me know which one you think you would get out of these two, or which one you are getting. Or if you've already got one of these, let me know in the comments below. And between now and my next video, make sure you subscribe first. Don't forget that. And come hang out with me on Twitter slash X and also on Instagram and hang out with me on there too, like really hang out with me on there. I've got lots of stuff, I give thoughts on there all the time. I post photos from the phones itself. So if you really want to see some more photos from the FE, it's a good place to go check out both of those. And I'll see you in the next one. Yo!